Take two. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and all the fish in the ocean. It is I, your grumpy guide to all things gaming, the man with no plan, the OGGM with another OGGM adventure. And this is one I am very excited about. I have been looking forward to this for days. This showed up on my table this morning in front of my house. Oh, it is the Tales from the Loop starter set. Box set. I got it on Amazon for $25.99 plus tax. The 2017 Gold Game of the Year. As you know, I love everything about Tales from the Loop. So when I saw this, I had to get it. I know I will probably never get a chance to play it unless I do something online because Ventura is a D&D only town. You even try and get people in this town to play anything else and they come at you with like pitchforks and torches. And right now gaming is dead because of COVID and all the stores. And it's like, it's impossible to get a game going and it's doubly impossible to get anybody interested in this. I tried and people just thought it was stupid. What, play kids? What? So this takes place in the Tales of the Loop universe. It is a starter set, which means it is not the complete rules of the game. It's just you know enough to, 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 to stick your feet in the water and get a taste of this amazing system, amazing world, amazing game. But it's a starter set, which means you'll eventually have to get some version of the real rules if you want to go further than the pre-generated adventure that's in here and the pre-generated characters. But still... Just like Minds of Pendlehaven in the D&D starter set, it is enough to get started, enough to run several episodes, and enough to get you hooked on this amazing world. So this comes complete with a illustrated rule book explaining how to play the game, a complete mystery called The Recycled Boy, a five pre-generated characters ready for you to play, a large full color map with a land and loop, and ten engraved custom dice. So let's open this and take a look. I mean... I already started opening it, but then the uh, camera cut off, so I have to restart. So let's try and avoid that. So right on top, we have the multiple D6s for Tales from Loop. It is a D6 system. We have a catalog. We have the full color map. One side depicting the loop located in Nevada, because Area 51. And one side depicting the loop in the much more eponymous uh, Sweden. So if you've watched the show, even though it sort of doesn't say where it takes place, it's because of the snow and everything and the, just sort of the setting of Tales for the Loop on Amazon. It's probably set in the um, Swedish setting. Um, so here we have the pre-generated characters, five pre-generated characters. Now this is a D6 system. It has archetypes. You play teenagers or preteens uh, in this city uh, where the loop is affecting everything. Now the loop is a particle accelerator, hadrian converter, whatever you want to call it, a mysterious energy source that this mysterious company has built under the city. And the day they turn it on, weird stuff starts happening. Stranger Things, Goonies level of, you know, uh, Big Trouble in Little China, dinosaurs walking down the streets, strange robots, interdimensional gateways. It's like riffs, but like moodier. Um, so there's five pre-generated character. Each one has an archetype. We have this lovely young lady. She's the popular kid. We have this gentleman. He's the weirdo. So the game, each, each body has an air hook. We have this guy. Obviously the jock. Look at him. See, I'm a jock. Look at me. I'm wearing the shorts and the thing. Yeah. We have this person. She's the computer geek. And we have Linda. She's the bookworm. So each one of these is a pre-generated character. They come complete with a layout. Uh, starting story. Got all your little stats. Uh, you've got her drive, problem, pride, description, and favorite song. The game highly recommends you having a playlist 
of the songs and even like a uh, Guardians of the Galaxy tape you can play during the gaming. Um, just your relationships, it has your skills, the thing that you value the most, stuff like that. And then, of course, we have the rules. Now, do not let this rather disappointing cover fool you because once you open it up, you are just drowned, engulfed, enraptured in the tranquil, weird, beautiful, breathtaking artwork of the artist Simon Stuttlegeger. Uh, I, I just, I love this world. I want to live in this world, even though it's, you know, this retro 80s that never was, this combination of, you know, sort of this depressing Swedish, beautiful yet tragic landscape with this amazing technology hundreds of years ahead of anything that exists, and yet there's something sort of dilapidated about it. And... You know, this is just beautiful and poignant and sad and wonderful and exciting and filled with everything, you know, that a sum, the last summer of childhood should be about, you know, excitement, adventure, giant robots, dinosaurs, parents who don't understand you, uh, you know, secret tree houses, and just sort of that poignant cusp between the end of childhood and the beginning of adolescence. Now, the second game, um, Things from the Flood, deals with the adolescence, and it's a completely different rule set, it's a completely different feeling, but this is that childhood in the 80s, or just childhood in general, that weird, strange imagination, this breathtaking world of just wonder and dread and just, oh, God, I just I just love this setting so much. This gentleman's art, Simon Sturtlerger's art, is so amazing. And then we have the example adventure, The Recycled Boy, a brand new adventure just for this game. And it's got all the things you want in an adventure. It's got, you know, some story. It's got the clues. It's got the hook, line, and sinker. It's got the five room, whatever. The build up, the middle, the hook, and the end. And there it is, the uh, classic picture of the children going off to face the future and oh uh, yeah just just so much love for this game this world this system yeah so yeah we're not going to go into the system that's it that should be a completely different book and of course like i said this is not the complete rules this is a starter set so if you want to go further with Tales from the Loop, you will need to pick up a copy of the Complete Rules, which I happen to have. Now, if you're not familiar with Free Leagues, they are also the people who brought us the brand new Alien role-playing game, which was nominated for a few worlds awards this round. The Forbidden Lands uh, Retro Clone Fantasy Campaign, Tales from the Loop, and Tales from the Flood, of course. Symbobium, uh, Vasen, and Mutant Zero and Coralius. Now all these all these games are based upon the same system that Coralius and Mutant Zero uh, uses called the Zero RPG system, which is a D6 system. You get a number of D6s to roll to beat the uh, difficulties um, and getting extra D6s to add to your numbers or you know part of the rewards and you know each character has their little shtick. Their little thing, the thing they're really good at, the thing they hope, the thing they fear, blah 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 blah. It's if you love Stranger Things, if you if you love the Goonies, if you love um, you know Big Trouble in Little China, if you love Gremlins, if you love uh, the idea of kids facing threats of super science and ancient terror and uncovering mystery, meddling kids, but still having to deal with all the Every day, mundane, do the dishes, listen to your sister, mom and dad are getting a divorce, all the weird shit that made up the dichotomy of the 80s and the 90s is why we were so still in 2020 enraptured with that those two chunks of our history, especially for kids like me, you know, well, I'm not a kid anymore, but you know what I mean? It's just, I mean, yeah, I just can't, I can't put it into words how much I love this man's work 
and I love just looking at the art and I love the story the art tells and just when I saw Tales from the Loop the very first time it took my breath away um, there hasn't been a role-playing game that's done that to me since Blue Planet and Blue Planet was like 10 15 years ago I mean sure there's role-playing games I absolutely love there's role-playing games I knew were gonna change the world there's role-playing games that I think you know help me be a better person there's role-playing games that open new doors there's role-playing games that make you think differently and approach the hobby and the world differently and make you go wow there's some you know freaky philosophy in ha hidden in this game but then every now and then something just comes along and just grabs you and goes <sighs> And that's Tales from the Loop for me. And it's been 2017 since I first heard of the game. So 18, 19, three years and still nothing has come close for making me go, wow. This game just, wow. So when I saw this, I had to app it. You've seen it with me. Perhaps we will go into the rules of Tales from the Loop if that's something you're interested. Yes, I do own a PDF of the actual rules. I did buy the PDF uh, of the rules from drive-thru. Uh, but when I saw this, I had to have it. So there you go. Unbox with you. Hope you appreciate it. If you want to see more unboxings, please support me. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please take this chance because we are rapidly coming close to that August 4th deadline of 200 subs. Sub. Help me hit 200 subs by August 4th and I will do something outrageous. And I have been looking at some of the vending machines in town. Just if you're wondering. I'll talk to you Tales from the Loop losers later. Keep the lights on.